I've been perfume shopping, y'all. Of course I have. And I make no apologies. I'm excited. I'm exhilarated. I feel good about my life decisions. And we're going to get into some of the designer fragrances that I've picked up over the last couple of months or so. And why did I say designer and not just perfume? Because there are other hauls to come. Yeah, it's been a little unhinged. It's been a little unhinged. But you know what? It's been fun. We got a celebrity fragrance haul coming. Yeah. We got a Zara perfume haul coming, yeah. And most importantly, I picked up some New Arabian fragrances and one of the best gourmands I've ever smelled that I tested in person, picked up and nearly slapped the woman because I nearly left and didn't try it. So we're going to get into a bunch of hauls that are coming up, but today we're doing mostly affordable designer fragrances and some other gems that were, you know, a plague on my wallet. But do I feel regret? You think so? but I don't. Let's get into it. Hello. 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 Hi, I'm Janique and today we're going over eight fragrances that I've picked up over the last few months. Yes, eight. Do not judge me. How dare you? That's not cool. But if you support my choice to get eight new fragrances, thank you for being here. I really really do appreciate the support anyway um the eight fragrances that i have here some of these are real gems like rocked my world smacked me in the face i was like what how dare you be so good and then some of these were just regular i'm not saying i regret them but you know you know you know anyway if you haven't subscribed yet do so join the people watching me because it's fun over here and let's get into some of these fragrances because i don't know we need to talk about it to make this you know not a bad choice on my part yeah for content so first up in this video is a fragrance that i know has good ratings but i had literally never heard of and it is uh, jimmy choo's mm, let's find a front illicit here's the thing Jimmy Choo fragrances usually do right by me, right? I want you. Yeah. I want you forever. I want you forever too. Fever. Sexy. So when I walk in and I see in the drugstore this on clearance for like $20, I want to find out more. So I bl blind bought it. I sprayed it and it was... It was a little bit more unusual, a little bit more ambery than Jimmy Choo usually gives, but the name Illicit was like, okay, it's trying to be a little bit different. I don't understand the hype, but fine. I sprayed it on paper. I tested it out. I thought, okay, a little bit better. It's nothing special then, y'all. I sprayed myself down and I went outside. And the way this thing developed on me, it is incredibly sensual not sexy these guys not out here looking at you being like oh you smell so good can i cuddle up there's something really like sensual about it but sensual for yourself like giving yourself a hot bath and like putting candles around the bath it feels like self-care but it's perfume so this is a honey fragrance right it is honey and it is amber it's cashmere so very soft and cozy it is warm it is pretty it is so unexpected i did not expect this to develop the way that it did and it took me out you know what it reminds me of it's like the kind of sort of sensuality you get from like putting on negligee at home all alone pouring yourself a glass of champagne and indulging in a charcuterie board or putting on a crisp white shirt, sitting at a cafe outside with a book by yourself and drinking a beautiful cup of coffee, unfucking bothered That is the energy of this fragrance. It feels grown and self-assured, but also incredibly sensual. It's the honey, the sweetness, but it's not over sweet. It's not juvenile sweet. It's sort of hint of like warm sweetness that blends into your skin that just makes you feel like you, but elevated. And the cashmere is woody, but warm and full and fluffy. It is so pretty. It is so beautiful and I did not see it coming. And I get why it's called illicit. It feels like that, right? Like it feels like you're just, it's, mm, you know, you know that Tink song, There Goes My Shirt? Yeah. 
yeah the next fragrance that i picked up i picked up on the same day as the jimmy chu illicit i don't know what i was on that day i guess i just wanted to throw caution to the wind and pick up a whole bunch of shit that just aren't my style just based on the notes because this is described as a woody boozy fragrance what does that mean how is woody ever boozy it does not make sense also it doesn't sound like me but you know what won me over aesthetics beauty the bottle look at how look how cute that is look how pretty plus it was on clearance plus the reviews were phenomenal and so i thought why not the the most that can happen is that if i don't love this scent profile i can use it as a layering fragrance because who can't use a little bit of extra wood or booze in their layering process yeah anyway i did not like this when i first sprayed it i thought why do you exist you're so annoying and then i wore it out and thought oh bitch you're so wrong you just so wrong you so judgmental i took it back i took it back really really fast and i love her first of all it's not wood that's in here it's leather and leather is sexy here's the thing people describe this as a unisex fragrance because of those elements there is leather there is amber there's patchouli there is some vanilla and there is a little bit of rum right it's a little bit of osmanthus when i'm talking about that but that is the scent profile there is no fruit in here there is not a lot of sweeter elements in this and so I got, I sort of got why they described this as a unisex fragrance, but it really isn't. There's something about this that feels ultra feminine to me, but in the way that like, I am the CEO of Google, kind of femininity, right? This sort of strong womanhood that is beautiful and sexy, but like, almost self-involved like this is not something you're wearing for other people but because you enjoy it and you feel good about it you like how this smells this is not for anybody else like i don't think i'm gonna ever get compliments on this but i really do enjoy it so let's get into what this smells like when you first spray it the rum hits you and i think a lot of the sweetness comes from the molasses in the rum and the rum plus, plus the amber creates this sort of thick resinous heaviness to the fragrance that gives it a bit of sweetness right and you get a little bit of that osmanthus at the opening the osmanthus as a as a floral can be a little bit milky a little bit sweet it doesn't get enough play honestly i enjoy a good osmanthus moment it doesn't have the staying power of some other florals but it is really nice in here and adds this sort of feminine like undercurrent to the fragrance which is wonderful but the real stars in this other than the rum the rum is great is this really heavy leather now you don't find a lot of leather in feminine fragrances it just does not happen and i've said before when i did like the nishane x sort of reviews um previews on you know that line that i don't always love leather it often reads very masculine to me and you add booze to that and it's like what are we doing here but somehow with the sweetness of the osmanthus it just creates this sort of delicate darkness to the fragrance that makes it feel grown but not old-fashioned so i picked up a few fragrances on that one perfume trip and the last one i picked up on that trip there are others to come obviously is guest seductive noir now of the three this is the highest rated right so i had high hopes and the reason i didn't pick this one up whereas the other ones i had seen things online about it this one i'd watch a whole youtube video talking about how wonderful this is here's the thing it's a nice fragrance it is vanilla it is creamy it is heavy it is wonderful here's the thing though it is not seductive or noir it is not it is like uh, if you are a church girl with a little bit of attitude it is mostly proper with a, a hint hint of darkness this is not who i don't know who you are seducing with this this feels more cozy taking care of uh, you know the next door neighbor's kids yeah that is the vibe this gives but it is still a nice fragrance so let's get into what this is it's vanilla it's vanilla and velvet so there's a really nice texture to it it's closer in my opinion to something like an almond milk latte there's like a sweet creaminess to it however the sweetness does not push right the sweetness is subtle it is with 
it's pulled back. It's like that, that almond milk latte without the pump of vanilla syrup, right? So you get the sweetness a little bit from the almond milk, basically, and you get a little bit of darkness and depth from amber in here. It is really pretty. It is cozy. It is warm. It feels like a hug. I enjoy it. It is not seductive. It is not noir, but it is nice, right? No. Am I trying to give Church Girl with a little bit of attitude? I am not. So the way that I judge this up, I have to judge. I have to judge. And the way I judge this up is to add a little bit of extra sweetness to it some of the times. So something like mm, the only one from Dolce & Gabbana that's giving caramel realness in like the over the top sweetness of that fragrance. When you layer them together, y'all, it is it like it makes both of them better right like the combination is so wonderful i've also layered this with super sweet vanillas like vani from solenotes i also layered it with tonka from solenotes and tonka is a little bit spicier so if you want a little bit more attitude that's what that gives but basically i wanted a bit more I wanted, I wanted it to be a little bit louder to fit my perfume vibe. It's a little bit subtle for me, so I've had to introduce other elements to make it scream a little bit louder. I need you to have more than a little attitude. I need you to be a little bit of a bitch sometimes. Yeah, this is not giving that, but it is really, really pretty, and I get why so many people love this fragrance, even if it's not quite for me, but it's getting a lot of wear. Yeah, it's getting a whole lot of wear because that texture, that velvet, that velvet is real nice. Let's move on. The next fragrance and my enjoyment of it makes me a little bit of a hypocrite. I can admit it, right? Because this fragrance is doing a lot of what that last one did in terms of dialing back a lot of the sweetness just introduce a bit more sophistication to the fragrance but for some reason and maybe i'll speculate about what those reasons might be i prefer this one even though it's not as well received as the other so it is bulgari's omnia coral and this is a berry fragrance that has some water lily and cedar it has some musk it's a very very basic fragrance and you hear all of that what does that mean you know what this smells like to me this smells like uh, a lollipop you know the lollipops with the bubble gum in the middle that is really like round and hard like a cherry one or a strawberry one the red ones right that is what this gives but not, not right up to your face like a little bit away so it doesn't kick that really sweet candy fragrance it smells like candy one step out from you right like at arm's length so it it you get a sense of it, the wateriness of the fragrance, but that it smells very candy-like. Now, this is supposed to be berry. Some kind of, it's pomegranate, it's goji berry, and you get a very sweet, candy, almost synthetic berry smell out of it. Yes, it smells like a lollipop. That's what it gives. And it has water lily in here. And I've talked a little bit about how soft florals, a lot of them, iris, violet, peony, petalia, a lot of them are more textural than they are like smells you know that they add a lot of texture to a fragrance iris makes things powdery and peony makes things hazy right and water lily does it makes things smell a little bit watery right and it's more of that texture than it is like the smell of the flower itself and so you have this watery sweetness this watery candiness and i swear i prefer it so it's giving barbie but not 12. it's giving sweet pink bubblegum energy without being juvenile and maybe it's the fact that like my standards when it comes to vanilla is the last one are just stupid because i collect vanillas like you know my life depends on it because maybe i don't know but candy smelling perfumes fruit smelling perfumes i 
I don't want, I mean, I do love a sweet fragrance, but I also can appreciate something that gives candy and a little bit more subtlety. So I really do enjoy this. So it's doing the basics of the same thing. It's trying to give us gourmand, but restrained. And I prefer the candy version to the vanilla. Give me all the vanilla. You don't need to hold back when it comes to vanilla with me, seriously. But with this, I prefer that it is a little bit more watery, a little bit lighter. It's a, it's a lighter touch. They have some cedar in the base that darker wood has a bit of sophistication so it does not feel as young it's not quite 30 year old sophistication but i can do early 20s on a good day don't say otherwise in the comment section that would be rude yeah it'd be rude so the next fragrance is moschino's i love love from the cheap and chic line i picked it up at the same time i picked up the omni accord i don't know what i was thinking that day i don't know what i was thinking that day there are some regrets from that particular haul. I'm not saying this is it, but maybe. Let's talk about it. The first time I got this fragrance and I tried it, I looked at it like this. Mm. Because I have to side-eye this fragrance because sometimes it is out to get me. And I need to talk about it. So here's the thing. This is a citrus fragrance for the most part. It has all the citrus. It has a lemon. It has grapefruit. It has orange. It has bergamot. It has a whole bunch of citrus in here. But the citrus that is really ruling the roost is the lemon. It is also a little bit tart. It's a little bit refreshing and fresh. It is sour lemon. It is very distinct. It's very face. Now, I'm not afraid of sour. Give me a sour fragrance. But I like a little bit of balance and all the things. And it does. But the way that it balances is balances it out is like it takes it to this extreme place because there is sugar in this. Now, there might be other fruit. I don't know. But there is sugar. Straight sugar. So what happens is that it almost feels like the sugar comes up under the lemon and like attacks it. And they're fighting with each other. And it creates this really like interesting dynamic that isn't your basic everyday citrus. You smell both. You smell sour lemon, you smell sugar at the same time. And it creates this really like novel and fun aura, oral, aura, olfactory, mm, that's it, experience. It's nice. However, you wear this on a hot enough day and it turns on your skin and the sugar disappears and all you smell like is sourness. It not nice. I'm saying smelling green is worse, but smelling sour is also not good. So sometimes this is out to get you. You have to strategize how to wear this very lovely fragrance. You have to strategize. It needs to be cool enough out. Not cold because it will turn on you if it's cold. It needs to be the right temperature, basically, to work. Who thought this was a good idea? I mean, I'm not mad. I'm a little mad. I'm not really mad because I get to experience it. But seriously, I shouldn't be side-eyeing side my fragrances, but I'm side-eyeing this one. Boom. Boom. So this is Estee Lauder Sensuous. Mm. And this is a honey fragrance. Do I prefer Sensuous Nude, the vanilla version? Yes. I know I'm predictable. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, whatever. I got the honey version though. Yeah, the other one was sold out. So I got this one because second best is still best. Anyway, this is not how I normally like my honey fragrances. I usually like a gourmand honey. Sweet, extra sweet, mm, sticky texture with some animalic touches to it yeah i would love the combination it's so for me just kind of exciting it just like makes my heart go a little pizza puzzle there's also that very cool kind of cold honey that i also enjoy it's a different version of honey this is honey with jasmine right so it's very spa like fresh honey it's like honey for clean girl aesthetic girlies right like it's clean it's fresh it's refreshing it's light it's very summery it smells like the most expensive spa the honey in here isn't pushing too sweet too gourmand too overpowering it is really nice it is very light it is very pretty whenever i wear this and i get good wear out of this fragrance it is so pretty that i, I love the bottle i don't know it's so simple but so look at that mm hold on hold on let's let's change the settings on this one sec can you see it i can't figure it out anyway um this is really 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 pretty um and i enjoy this fragrance 
the problem is this cost $61, right? And there is this girl on fragrance called Petite Rob Noir for $55. And every time I look at this, I think about the fact that I could have that one and I didn't get it because how many cherry fragrances can one person have? Apparently one more because and I shouldn't do this, right? Just enjoy this for what it is. Because at the moment of checkout, it was this or that, and I picked this. And then I went ahead when I was in Vegas. We'll talk about it. As in Vegas, I went to the girl on store. We'll talk about it. I tried Petite Rob Noir in person. And even though it's lower rated than this, I prefer it, y'all. Now, do I deserve both? Yes. But for the moment, while I don't have both, I think about it. And I think about how I could be smelling like cherry goodness, and I don't. Instead, I smell like a spa, a delicious spa, a clean spa, but not cherries. Let's move on. Speaking of sweet and animalic, the next fragrance we have, mm, it looks like Bon Bon, it's a flanco. It's Bon Bon Couture from Victor Anderol. Here's the thing. This is a gem. I don't know, there's a part of me that wants to say it's not a safe blind buy because of particular elements of this fragrance. It was disappointing the first time I wore this. I tried it in the bottle, it was a hard no. In the atomizer, it is, uh, it is uh, weird or not good. Mm, I don't know. The opening is a lot to take. We'll talk about it. Um, And the dry down was not what I expected. Here's the thing. I bought this fragrance specifically because there's tobacco in the base. I love a smoky fragrance and a lot of feminine fragrances do not have smoke in it. They don't have, they don't have tobacco. They don't have enough ambergris in there. You have to be out here searching for good florals and fruit and a little bit of smokiness. I'm surprised when after my heavy searching, mm, heavy searching for a little bit of smoke and a little bit of femininity, I found this guy and I got very excited because it has tobacco in the base. When I got it, first of all, I didn't know what white tobacco meant. So when I tried it and it did not smell smoky at all, there was no darkness, there was no depth, there was no cigarette. I was like, why? I feel duped. It's not what I wanted. And I pouted and I put it away and I did not care. Hmm. Anyway, I revisited it and I decided to create an open mind. I really tried to understand what white tobacco meant and where I might have misunderstood or misinterpreted that fragrance indicator. And try to get around the opening. Here's the thing. The opening is this is very peachy. It's very but it's rotten peach. Don't I'm not being disrespectful. Like I like it now. But it smells like overripe fruit that has been sitting out in the sun. It is very the peach is just, it is, it's weird. It's a, it smells spoiled. It smells like spoiled fruit. Like almost like, almost like heading in the direction of like marmalade or something that's, you've put it to good use maybe, but it's a little strange, but not in a bad way. And like, as you are getting into it, you're getting loose. You're opening your mind a little bit. Rushes in this very animalic orange blossom. I'm like, excuse me. That's interesting, right? So it gets taken over by this very flowery element. So it's very floral forward in the scent profile, but it has these animalic touches that make it a little bit different, a little bit more sophisticated. Once the peach dissipates a little, it kind of, it doesn't even take that long. I'd say like in 20 to 30 minutes, the peach sort of eases back and there's this caramel that gets very sticky and pronounced that marries well with the orange blossom to make this a very warm, soft, beautiful white floral fragrance that is very pretty. Then I finally figured out what the white tobacco was giving because there is white tobacco in the base and I could not understand what it was meant to smell like. And it's not a smell, it's more of a texture, right? So the feeling of the fragrance is that it is hot and sticky, right? It sort of feels like summer in like Savannah with 
sweet tea and like a fan and you're sweating there's something imposing about the feeling of the fragrance and it feels heavy on you like a lot of times there are these cloud-like elements that are very cloud-like and kind of imposing they sort of waft around you and feel very airy and light and the experience of this was very different and i wanted to figure out how do i capture it it feels like a fog almost like it feels like you need to get through and wade through this heaviness that is all around you but the the minute you sort of get a get across get around the idea that like this is what it's supposed to smell or this is what this fragrance is supposed to feel like and you sort of open your mind to it that experience is a very new one and it's it's kind of nice right it just sits on you so heavily i can imagine this at like peak winter the wetness, the stickiness, the heaviness of the fragrance. And it lasts because of that, right? The staying power of this fragrance because of that white tobacco is fantastic. It just keeps going and going and going. And so I will say this is i feel like a lot of these fragrances from this haul were redeemed in my mind like over time they grew on me as i tried them over and over and over again and this one i went in the most excited about and i guess the most disappointed because it was not it did not give me the smoky vibes that i wanted but it does give me a foggy vibes and i didn't know i needed that but obviously i did because i don't have anything else like this we got one more y'all um this is the bougiest of all of them and the one that i came out of pocket to get but it was so worth it i went into the girl on store while i was in guys because of course i did obviously and tried a bunch of things that i had been wanting to test out looking at you spiritos double vanille because it was high up on the list it was disappointing Ooh. i tried their tuberose fragrance good but not great Ooh. there's another one that i didn't expect to like i want to say it was um outre musk outre musk something like that that was good that was real good but the one i walked out with that i did not expect I, it wasn't even on my radar i just tried it because it was the first in the line y'all girlons angelique noir do i feel like a rich bitch when i wear this yes there's something about this that is not just the price tag that makes you feel opul opulent and decadent because there's a lot of expensive ass fragrances that make you feel cheap looking at you tobacco vanille i will never get over how terrible it is tom ford do better anyway this on the other hand i have never tried angelica right i'd watched a video from the honest perfumer she is a reviewer here i'll link the video that i watched talking about angelica as a note now i didn't have anything in my collection with angelica i looked because everybody she was hyping it she was hype saying angelica smelled real good so i went and looked i didn't have anything i had one little bit little bit iris malacan from maison crivelli has angelica in it so i went back i looked and Try and I was like, it smells nice. I don't know what I'm supposed to be experiencing. And then I tried this and I get it. It's like nothing I've experienced before. A lot of, it's, it feels like a soft floral. So it's, a, it's very textural. It's very like warm and full and it's a little bit powdery but not really it's not really powderiness but it's cloud-like it's enveloping it's overwhelming but it is so beautiful it mixes that with a little bit of pepper a little bit of vanilla so a little bit of sweetness there this is just the most sophisticated this is a fragrance you wear on your anniversary to a beautiful dinner where you're gonna sit down and be served you're gonna have like a beautiful tasting menu you're going to be dressed up having champagne this feels opulent but it feels sophisticated it feels rich it feels like that and girl on really does me wrong right for my fra my birthday fragrance i picked up a girl on fragrance mandarin basilic i did a video on that nobody watched it but i did a video on it and this is more birthday worthy not that that wasn't that's a beautiful fragrance that is great for summer but this feels like more of a marker of a special occasion that's what this is this is a special occasion fragrance and i'm gonna put it up and use it real slow yeah 
And so yeah, that is the end of them. This is the last one. And this wasn't a blind buy. Obviously, I went to the girl on store. I tried a bunch of things. I tried Petite Noir while I was there and I had such a good time. It was a successful buying trip, excuse me. I discovered a new um, Arabian fragrance company house, tried a whole bunch of things. Um, there will be a haul of what I picked up there and elsewhere and things people have recommended to me, including a bomb coffee fragrance that I cannot wait to share with y'all. So things are happening, things are happening, things are happening. And that is it for the designer fragrances for now. There are other things coming. Don't judge me. Seriously, how dare you? So that's everything for me. The eight fragrances I've added to my collection recently been testing out wearing down and fully enjoying. Some made me feel like a bad bitch. Others make me feel like a rich one. And either way, Either way, I feel like I'm winning, even if I'm slightly more broke for all of it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you stuck around till the end. I hope you've subscribed. I hope you've liked. I hope you've done a whole bunch of things. I hope you've moisturized today. I'm Janique. I'm sharing my love of fragrances with you. And please don't judge me for buying all of these because if I don't buy them, who will? Baby, you're the one and only. Baby, you've been on my mind. You know you don't have to be lonely You can come and take my time Baby, I've been waiting for you I don't mean to move too fast I don't wanna be your homie I just wanna be your last nigga Baby, you're the one and only I don't even see these hoes But they be in my Insta story Cause they just wanna see me You've been a